Hey people, Dan Allen from youtube.com forward slash Dan on a bouncy castle here and this is my first Photoshop tutorial. Let me know if you think I should do more and you never know you could see some more. But this was request requested, it was um, creating DVD menus in Photoshop. So I thought I'd just give you a basic overview of what I believe to be the best way to do it and then possibly we'll look at taking that and animating it in Adobe After Effects. Um, so let's go file new. Um, here it says international paper, but it could say anything that you've got. Um, let's go film and video, and depending on what you're working with, I will go with widescreen square pixel PAL. You want to go square pixel because then it's not going to mess with aspect ratios or anything. And if you don't know what that is, then choose it anyway. Um, just leave it as the basic settings. Um, and I'm going to call it DVD menu. So Photoshop will go ahead and create me a background like this. You don't really want it to be transparent, or well, you can, but it won't make any difference. Um, what you want is some images from your film, or if you've got an actual um, background, then even better. But I'm going to load up Finder. Um, and I'm going to go into my pictures and let's choose my N image. I'm going to drag it onto my Photoshop icon and that will open the image in Photoshop. Magic. Now, obviously, this isn't a very good background, but the bottom line is you can create a background as well as you want inside of Photoshop. Um, so, this is my DVD promotional poster. Oh, I probably shouldn't have messed with the scale. Never mind. Onwards and upwards. Let's just accept that. And then what you want is some options. So, depending on what you've got, um, obviously you want a play movie. Now on this kind of background you want it to be white. Um, if you look at it, that will show up more. You, you really want to just see which colour works best. Um, go away quick to me. So I'm going to have a play movie. You also want to mess around with the typewriter. Now I'm not going to go into huge detail in this tutorial because the bottom line is it's your menu, so I'm going to choose this cool bank gothic font, um, choose our type tool again, T key, um, you might want scene selection, um, special features, Another common one is subtitles. And the reason I'm checking up here is because it's the quickest way to exit the menu or the, the text tool. Um, and then you can line them up. I'm going to choose Play Movie from my Layers panel. Um, I'm going to put that at the top. Now, you can obviously have them across the bottom. But I'm going to put them here. Special features. We'll go there. And you want to have snaps on to make it look as professional as possible. Um, if you go into view, snaps, you can choose what it's going to snap to and just make sure that tick is there. If it's not, then just click on snaps. Um, and that way. You can see that purple line coming up, that is like snapping it to various things, but I want it to snap to this grid line here. Um, I'm going to select all of these and move them down as a group. And speaking of groups, um, one way to keep yourself organized is to group them all. Um, this is the group icon, select them all, drag them into the group, you can name them, menu buttons. Fantastic. Um, and then you can go File, Save As, 
and just save it as a Photoshop file. And then we'll look at animating them in After Effects. So, well, I'll tell you what, I'll load up After Effects right now. We're going to File, Save As, Pictures, um, DVD, Menu, Tut. There we go. But this depends on how quickly After Effects loads up. Um, shouldn't be too long. There we go. Adobe After Effects is loading. Now, obviously, the background, you want to make it yourself in Photoshop. Well, this was made in Photoshop, but it's not much of a DVD background because no, it just doesn't look very DVD backgroundish, does it? Um, if you check out my tutorials for DVD Studio Pro, you can get an idea of what a DVD background might look like. Um, and then hopefully that will inspire you to create a really good background. Come on, After Effects. It's going slow because screen flick is, um, as well as recording the screen, it's also exporting a video. Probably not my smartest move. Okay, now we're going to go into Finder. It's called DVD menu background. It might be at the bottom. Do not ask me why Taylor Swift is in my pictures. I've got a lot of album artwork because most of my stuff doesn't come with album. Well, my friends send me loads of songs and stuff. And sometimes iTunes doesn't find it. Um, DVD menu. That's what we called it, wasn't it? Yep. Once I fact follow, do 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 do. Don't understand where it's gone. There we go. I'm going to drag this into After Effects. Sorry about wasting your time there. Um, and that'll bring the Photoshop file in. But the thing about dragging and dropping is that when you click it, it's just a still image, and we don't want that. We want the other separate things. So what we can do is go File, Import file, let's go pictures, DVD, open, and when you see with that drop down box choose composition, ok, ok. Now it's already got the grid things but it won't render out with them, that's good. Um, Menu buttons does itself as its own kind of like tutorial thing, and what you can do is animate these on. So, um, highlight them all, press P to load up position, and say I want them all on within three seconds. Check the position, and I actually want them to come in from all different directions. So, play movie is going to come in from the top. Scene selection is going to come in from the side. And special features, whatever. And from there and subtitles and subtitles are going to come in from the bottom and as you can see they all come in and that looks pretty cool um, also another thing you might want to do is add an adjustment layer and basically what you can do is just give it some kind of variation so like if you give it noise then the advantage of this is that Noise animates, so you can see the noise is sort of like moving, and in doing this, it will make it look like it's a piece of video, sort of thing. It'll just detract from the fact that it is a still image. Um, 
and you'll see you've got all this moving in which is cool and another thing you can do is add a glow effect stylize glow, I'm a bit pushing for time here um, increase the intensity alt click sorry, alt click on the stopwatch wiggle zero, um, 2 comma 2 and now it will have a varying glow like that and then you can render that out and enjoy with that in fact this has already gone over I'm going to go on and I'll just edit it um, actually no that's cool and yeah just mess around have fun see you soon